All right, good afternoon. What's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we get busy. Saturday afternoon, Business Mob Story, Season 2. Before we get started, I have to thank all 374 people that left comments and emails letting me know that I dropped the ball on the last video. Got confused. London, Ontario. Thank you for educating me. I thought it was London, England, only because of the Thames River. If I'm not mistaken, there's a Thames River in London, UK, and there happened to be a Thames River in Ontario, Canada. That's where I dropped the ball. Uh, gentlemen, you know the rules. Wipe your feet on the rug before entering. Throw some smoke into the atmosphere. I just lit up a little bit of Sunday Driver, like ice cream Sunday, but it's called Sunday Driver. Delicious, indica dominant. Let's get right into it, gentlemen, all right? Continuing with the families north of the border, Let's get into the Catroni family, the Catroni crime family. The Catroni crime family, originally Catrone, is an organized crime family based in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. The FBI considered the family a branch of the Bonanno crime family. A Calabrian immigrant from Mamola, Vincenzo Catroni, established the organization in the 1940s. Their territory once covered most of southern Quebec and Ontario. An internal war broke out between the Calabrian and Sicilian factions of the family in the late 1970s, which resulted in the death of acting Captain Paolo Violi and his brothers. This allowed the Sicilian Rizzuto crime family to overtake the Contronis as the permanent crime family in Montreal. Vincenzo died of cancer in 1984 followed by his brother, Frank Vincenzo, in 2004. In the 1950s, the family formed a strong connection to the New York Bonanno crime family as the crime family began controlling the majority of Montreal's drug trade. In 1953, Carmine Lilo Galante, an influential member of the New York-based Bonanno crime family, arrived in Montreal and worked with Catroni. Galante planned to make Montreal a pivotal location in the importation of heroin from overseas for distribution in New York City and across the United States in the French Connection. Police also estimated that Galante was collecting gambling profits in Montreal worth about $50 million per year. In April 1956, due to Galante's strong-arm extortion tactics, the Canadian government deported him back to the United States. In the late 1960s, the Catronis had violent feuds with French-Canadian mobster Richard Blass, with Catroni associate Joe DiMaolo doing much of the enforcing. On May 7, 1968, Blass and Robert Allard attempted an ambush of Frank outside his home. Two of his bodyguards were killed, but Frank escaped. In the 1960s and 70s, Catroni used associate William O.B. Abrant to supervise a bookmaking network in the Ottawa Hall area that handled around 50000 in bets per day, with 25% going to Paolo Violi. Obi also served as Catroni chief banker and financial advisor responsible for laundering money. For Montreal's Expo 67, Obi helped the Catronis land a meat and vending machine supply contract, most of which was tainted meat. In 1973, Obi was charged with tax fraud, sentenced to 20 months in jail, in order to pay $683,000 in back taxes. In the early 1970s, Catroni transferred the day-to-day -day activity of the family to his Calabrian compatriot, Violi, a capo de China together with Nicolos Di Lorio, Frank Catroni, and Luigi Greco. Catroni's role became more that of an advisor to the younger Calabrian. Greco led the Sicilian faction of the family until his death in 1972. Soon after 1973, a violent internal power struggle broke out between the Sicilian and Calabrian fractions in the not notably aspiring Sicilian boss, Nicolo Rizzuto. During the violent mafia war in Montreal, Violi and his brothers were murdered along with others through the mid-1970s to the early 1980s when the war ceased. By the mid-1980s, the Rizzuto crime family emerged as Montreal's preeminent crime family after the turf war. The Calabrian faction continued to operate with Frank Catroni, who had been imprisoned from 1975 to 1979 as acting boss for his little brother after the early 1980s. When Vic Catroni died of cancer in 1984, Frank was left as boss. Frank developed connections with French-Canadian 
Rial Samard, who became his driver and hitman. In 1986, Samard turned informant a disgrace after his arrest, confessing to five murders and involvement with Catroni. Catroni was sentenced to eight years in prison for manslaughter in 1987. Frank Catroni died of cancer in August of 2004, leaving the Rizzuto Sicilian faction as the most powerful family in Canada. On November 4, 2012, Joe DiMauro, a longtime ally of the Catroni family, was murdered outside his Montreal home. Police believe his murder was part of an ongoing power struggle between the Sicilians and their rivals. All right, so first of all, salute. You know the deal, like, comment, share. I think we're almost done with the Canadian families. I'll see if there's any more. I think the next one we'll do, we'll, uh, let's start moving down a little bit south, and let's do the Buffalo crime family, all right? We'll do that one next. Gentlemen, like, comment, share. Let me know where you're smoking are. And again, thank you for correcting me with that little mistake I made. I realize people love to correct other people when they're wrong. I dig it. I can take the criticism as long as you do it respectfully. Everybody enjoy the rest of your weekend. Salute. Big Rich, New York City. Throw some smoke in the air.